Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics Two-Dimensional Geometry and Beyond video. In this video, I'll be talking about representing the movements of two notes on a Mobius strip and then generalizing that idea to a three-dimensional chordal lattice and beyond. Recall the one-dimensional pitch class circle from the previous video. On that circle, we can model the movements of single notes. But what if we want to consider the paths of two notes in relation to one another? Imagine you start with a two-note chord, an F and an A. You can represent this chord as an ordered pair, F, A. Now if the F moves to A-flat and the A moves to B, our ordered pair changes to A-flat, B. If we wanted to, we could represent this motion as a line segment in Euclidean space. But now consider that, unlike one-dimensional space, we're going to need to take octaves into account. By taking octaves into account, we can represent the infinite number of potential two-note combinations on an appropriately infinite space. This infinite space I'm referring to is a two-dimensional ordered pitch space, or the two-note Mobius strip. This Mobius strip-like structure is essentially an organized arrangement of all the possible ordered two-note chordal combinations in the span of every fathomable octave. We say it looks like a Mobius strip because, if you'll notice, we can connect the upper left-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner and the bottom left-hand corner to the top right corner to flush out the full infinite space. We do this over and over again to get the full range of all ordered two-note chords. Different types of motion between chordal pairs is represented on the different axes of the strip. For example, parallel motion follows a horizontal axis, contrary motion follows a vertical axis, and oblique motion follows the diagonal axis. It can get rather difficult to model and represent chordal motion and voice leading on this complicated strip, so for greater generality, we can fold this infinite space into a single Mobius strip-like structure of equivalence classes, just like we did in a single dimension. To help us visualize what the surface of the space looks like, we can zoom in to, to view the full space here. This is the unordered pitch class Mobius strip. This unordered two-note chord space also represents intervals between notes. At the bottom and top of the strip, we have a unison where the two notes are the same, and, the, and, and in the middle we have the tritone. Notice that the note pairings along the central horizontal axis all have the same number of semitones separating the two constituent notes. Here, you can see a modeling of the beginning of the Chopin E minor prelude on an unordered two-note chord space. After all this two-dimensional modeling, you may be wondering, well, what if we have more than two notes? What happens then? We can't model triads in the Mobius strip, and you're right. We can generalize the ideas of musical distance and continuity we developed in the two-dimensional models to three-dimensional models and beyond. In the three-dimensional model, we have something that looks like an infinite triangular prism containing points that represent distinct three-note chords. If we want to generalize away from octaves, we can create a kind of Mobius-like structure with a single coiled triangular prism representing a single octave of motion. Let's zoom in. On the inside of this chordal lattice, we have an oblique tiling of cubes, the vertices of which represent major, minor, diminished, and augmented triads. In the very center of the prism, at the central vertices of the inner cubes, we have augmented chords, which not coincidentally are the most evenly spaced around the one-dimensional pitch class circle. For example, the C augmented triad has constituent pitch classes 0, 4, and 8, which create a perfect equilateral triangle around the pitch class circle. As we move to the edges of the outer prism, we get the least evenly spaced note collections, or note clusters. Using the same idea, 
we can extend these geometric models to infinite dimensions. It gets more difficult, even impossible, to visualize in four dimensions and higher. Even computer-generated visualizations can be a little confusing. Consider this modeling of a part of the Chopin E minor prelude on the four-dimensional chordal tesseract. That's all for this video. To see the next video in the Mesomathics series or visit centermass.org, click right here on the blackboard. Thank you for watching.